All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being a part of this very special webinar hosted by the uh, Carroll County Chamber of Commerce. Um, I'm going to start reading from the script now, so that way I'm not off key here. Uh, welcome. Uh, we're happy to present the webinar in partnership with the Georgia Commute Options. Joining us today are Carolyn Barr, Elham Cherise, and the Georgia Commute Options, a program of the Atlanta Regional Commission, the ARC. They've asked me to kick things off with a quick two-minute video about who they are. And so, here it goes. The International Olympic Committee has awarded the 1996 Olympic Games to the city of Atlanta. on that one. Uh, a reminder, please, that if you're not speaking, please mute your uh, microphone on that one. Okay, so now that that has been uh, played, uh, I want to introduce uh, Carolyn Barr, I mentioned at the top of the program. Uh, she is the uh, worksite advisor for Carroll County, and so uh, Carolyn, if you'll please take it away. Great. Hi, everyone. First, I want to thank Carroll County Chamber and Carroll Tomorrow and JR for having us. We're very excited to be able to present in this forum and do a little advocating for telework today. I am the Worksite Advisor for Georgia Commute Options, or GCO. As you saw in our opening video, we've been around for 25 years. Uh, you may have known us as the Clean Air Campaign or heard of the Commuter Club, Livable Buckhead, Perimeter Connects. We're all connected and we're all programs of or supported by the Atlanta Regional Commission. Our goal is to reduce congestion and improve air quality by reducing traffic in Atlanta. We're a federally funded program. Our money comes through CMAC, Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality Improvements. Those dollars are earmarked specifically for us to work with employers to help promote cleaner commutes. Those include teleworking, walking and biking, carpools and transit. All of our services are free to employers in the Metro Atlanta region. So if you don't remember anything else from this presentation today, our services are free to you. All of you in Carroll County are um, able to get our services, so give us a call. So as a strategy to reduce traffic and improve air quality, We've been working on telework since 1995. Put that in a little bit of perspective. 1995 was the birth of Windows 95. The uh, email hot domain hotmail became available. Internet Explorer was 1.0. There was a computer company known as Gateway 2000, and they delivered personal computers 
to your door in a box that looked like a Holstein cow. That was very exciting when my first gateway <laughs> showed up. 7% uh, of American homes had what would loosely be referred to as a home office at that point. And a little thing happened called the Federal Flexible Workplace Pilot Project, where 550 federal employees were allowed to try working from home. It went so well that that was later confirmed by Congress as an option for federal workers. And we like to say telework was born. Fast forward to April 2020. We're in a much different situation now. We have just finished a com uh, commuter engagement survey, and we'll have that data up on our platform in a week or so. What we're finding out is 49% of Atlantans are currently working from home. They're using Internet Explorer uh, 11, Microsoft 365, Teams, Zoom, Slack, G Suite, VPNs, two-factor authentication, it looks very different than it did in uh, uh, 1995, but it brings the question, Elham, is what we're doing now a true picture of telework? Uh, well, you know, I have to tell you, I've been promoting telework for over 30 years, and teleworking is supposed to be a, a quiet day at home, typically where you get to concentrate, you can work on, you know, your projects that are your long-term projects that you ha can't get the time to uh, complete in the office. But um, unfortunately, um, you know, what we're seeing today is what is referred to as extreme teleworking. And uh, we never thought from, a, you know, corporate perspective that teleworking would account to everyone being under the same roof uh, at the same time. And so it was meant to be a day that you would be home, your spouse, your children, your partner, you know, nobody else would be home and you could just spend the day getting your work done. Um, and you weren't at the same time providing um, homeschooling, taking care of young kids, taking care of dependents, uh, try to cook, bake, make dinner, lunch for everyone, and also be stressed by the pandemic. So this is a bit of a challenging situation for um, a lot of U.S. workers. So that begs the question, let's talk about traditional telework and telework policies. What are the specific advantages of having a specific telework policy? Um, and, you know, I, I actually do want to um, speak to the fact that whether or not we're under normal teleworking, um, it's really important for the organization to have some kind of a document um, that describes what this arrangement is about. Now, um, you know, you can call it a policy, you can call it a guideline, you can, you know, just call it an agreement. It all depends on what your typically your HR manual looks like. Um, the purposes of having guidelines um, is that, the purposes are that, so that both the employer and employee are um, protected and operate under the same rules in terms of what this arrangement is about. Um, the beauty of having um, a guideline is that it also um, makes the selection process quite um, transparent so that you can see why, um, in, in today's example, why only the non-essential uh, workers can telework. Obviously, the essential workers do not have that luxury, and that's something that we can't forget. Um, so this is for people who are your white collared employees who can work from home, but typically they should be meeting productivity or hitting above in order to be considered. Their jobs should be right. They should have the right attributes, um, you know, for uh, teleworking, such as being a self-starter. And sometimes it does take a few weeks to get it right. Um, and what we're hoping is that through this COVID experience, people are becoming better and better at teleworking. And we're hoping that supervisors are also finding it easier um, to manage how people are doing work remotely. There are some legal guidelines that should be followed. Um, so it's very important 
um, that you're aware of, you know, uh, what your FLSA um, is regard, um, you know, so that people who are non-exempt, you're still able to record their 40 hours of work. And if they go above, it would be considered overtime. And um, you also want to make sure that um, you're compliant from a, um, a workers' comp uh, perspective so that when employees work at home, they set up a safe work environment so they can't hurt themselves in their designated workspace. I know a lot of people don't have a designated workspace right now, but um, to the degree that they can, that would be ideal. And you know, just make sure that you are consulting your attorneys. We do have samples. Carolyn will refer to some of our samples, and uh, obviously, um, we can. Um, what Let, we let's do. take a quick look at some of those legal pitfalls that we might want to keep in mind. Okay. Um, well, let's back, back one. Back one. There we go. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. So, um, you know, again, with wage and hour, very important, you know, don't forget that it's, you know, for your uh, non-exempt, uh, they can't go into overtime without permission. And as I mentioned, it's 40 hours of week work per week. Uh, if they go over that, that's overtime. Uh, with workers' comp, when an employee works at home, the office does extend um, to the, um, you know, to the designated workspace within the home. So it's good to have employees define what that workspace is um, and also work um, under the agreed upon work hours uh, and um, you know make sure when they're in the workspace if there is a, a work injury they report it immediately. OSHA does not expect employers to do home office inspections. Um, so this is not something you have to do but a lot of employers do reserve the right to look at that space um, if there is an accident. Um, under ADA and FMLA, um, employers are not required to, um, to offer um, you know, teleworking as um, an accommodation. And <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, but if, if it is a possibility, they do, um, they do consider it. Um, we also want to make sure that you have the right language in your guidelines, in your policies, and that language should always mention that uh, teleworking is not a perk, it's not a privilege, it's actually not an entitlement. And the best way to talk about it is that it's simply a workplace strategy that may be available you know, for a certain amount of time. Um, and very importantly, have any of these legalities been a showstopper? I'm really glad that Carolyn did let you know about the federal government. They're one of the biggest users of telework. And I always say if the feds can do it, then anyone can do it. Um, and um, believe me, uh, we've been experimenting with teleworking actually since the late 70s, before even we had technology. So. Um, yeah, uh, these are these are important issues, but not a reason not to um, to you know not make telework a part of your workplace. Terrific. Now we're in this period of time that some people are calling the reopening. If you've not had a formal telepolicy up till now, is it too late? Is now a good time to do it? And oh. how can it help us? Yeah, um, absolutely, it's a good time to do it. And in fact, some organizations have taken the step to even have a transitional policy, which may not be as strict as a normal policy. And what I mean by that is, you know, again, given the type of teleworking that we're seeing happen today where, you know, children are there, you've got all kinds of other coworkers, right, that you, you didn't know you would have, um, you know, um, including your pets and, and everybody else, um, and so it's it might be that your organization um, is a little bit looser on you know the provision of childcare, dependent care, while people are are teleworking, and sometimes um, you know noise is not considered as important as it would if we weren't all in the same location. But it's um, not only is it good to have a policy or an agreement, but it's also important to have a document 
that usually is signed by the teleworker and the manager agreeing on you know the the conditions for teleworking so as you can see on this agreement again this is downloadable from our website um, and so first of all the location of work should be clear um, you know you want to have an idea right now it's probably full-time but maybe the you know where you see there it says from what date to what date if you're only doing this for purposes of the emergency Obviously, it would just say, you know, uh, you know, until reopening, or yeah, when I looked on the state that policy and it said, please make an appointment. You would leave it uh, a little bit vague, um, and um, you know, you want to include indicate what are some of the core <laughs> hours people are teleworking because they may vary. Uh, right now, under COVID, some people may be able to only work in the morning, some in the afternoons. Uh, because of other family businesses taking place. Normally, you know, this this would be for, you know, you would say two or three days and then the core hours would be clear. And then you have some mention of assignment by the type of equipment that's being used, whether it's employee owned or not. And, you know, how often you want people to um, make, sh make sure that they're communicating. Right. So, um, do you have a basic outline that companies can follow? Uh, how do they get these this information? Um, sure, we do have a basic outline, um, and um, you know, typically, um, you know, we will work with you. We will send you templates, but on that outline, usually. Um, are items such as the goals for the project. And I really do suggest that you tie um, the goals uh, to something uh, that might be beyond um, just uh, the business continuity. Because as we all know, there are a lot of other reasons for which teleworking um, is useful. It does help improve productivity, even in this environment. Um, employees are reporting about 60, uh, 50 to 60 percent of employees are saying that they are um, just as or more productive while they work at home. So you might want to tie it to productivity. You might want to tie it to overhead. If you're seeing that all your space isn't being used and you don't need as much parking, um, you also want to make sure that there's an understanding of what the communication needs of your organization are. Excuse me. <clears throat> such as, um, you know, employees should be accessible and available at all times uh, during the agreed upon telework hours. Again, this might not be as easy to do um, in a transition, but maybe become part and parcel of your future policy. You do want to have strict rules about equipment, um, you know, identifying who provides it, if it's the employer, obviously nobody else, you know, should touch that except for the employee and the employer would pro provide the upkeep and maintenance. If it's the employee, the employee provides um, the upkeep and maintenance. Um, but you also don't want to overload your IT departments. So there should be very clear um, distinctions between where IT assistance ends and where it begins. And, and also about you know, what those hours are. In addition, there's usually some discussion of the legalities that are included in a policy. Um, and, uh, you know, th then that's where you can mention this is not, uh, teleworking is not a replacement for child care or dependent care. And, um, uh, you know, usually, yeah, these policies are, are not that complicated. These guidelines are not that complicated, but at least that they make the process very transparent. And we'd like to say that these are available from our website, and you can go to gacommuteoptions.com, and all we require is an email address, and we, you can download uh, the Quick Start Guide for us. So in addition to the Quick Start Guide, uh, are there basic do's and don'ts for teleworkers and managers? Um, yes. Um, you know, I think some of these I, I did mention, and I know that we have a guest speaker that's going to go into some of this with a lot more detail, but we do want teleworkers, <clears throat> as I mentioned, the accessibility issue, <clears throat> excuse me, should be very clear. Um, and if somebody is on a phone call, um, is on a meeting, 
then, you know, they can simply text back or IM back and say, we'll call you back, you know, as soon as my, my call is over. Um, but we also do recommend that everybody keeps their schedules updated and that, you know, whether you use Outlook or whatever format, that it's easily shared and that there's a clear delineation between um, uh, what, you know, times you are and are not available. And obviously, right now, um, there is a difference, and that is during the workday, there might be some hours that the employee has worked with their managers on shifting, so it might be a personal, non-available time, uh, but then maybe they're working later or earlier. Part of that discussion should also be if employees can flex, start earlier, <clears throat> end earlier, or start later and end later. So um, as long as the flexibility is discussed, I think um, uh, it will be a lot easier um, for everybody to understand how the workday will go. Great. We're all teleworking, so let's discuss some of the basic guidelines we should all be using to be more productive. Um, you know, and I know that, you know, by now a lot of you are probably um, reaching uh, fourth week of shelter in place um, in Atlanta. And um, but here are just some good tips, even moving, moving forward. Um, it's always good to, telemarketing. No it's idea. always good to have a morning Chamber ritual. Thing uh, teleworking. Excuse me, whoever's talking, please mute your microphone. Um, <laughs> please go ahead, Han. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, it's giving me a time to clear my throat. Um, Anyhow, um, it's good to have a morning ritual. We all had rituals when, you know, we were going to work. You get up, shower, get dressed, uh, you know, feed the kids, uh, sit in the commute. Sitting in the commute was part of the ritual, right? Go through all that stress, get to the office, get a cup of coffee, and then start. Well, when you're at home, all of this is optional. We definitely recommend you get dressed, not dressed up, but, you know, do get out of your pajamas, uh, do have something which says, here's when it, when I'm going to start working. Make sure you're taking uh, virtual breaks. Sometimes, uh, you know, a break is a good time to move around, walk around, stretch. Sometimes it's not a bad idea to have a virtual break with your coworkers. So you can, you know, actually have an informal discussion. People miss each other. And, um, you know, keep them short, though. Um, a lot of people are getting tired of very long webinars and, and zo uh, long Zoom meetings. So, you know, virtual break might be just 10 minutes, but it gives the chance to everybody to get personal. Um, eat lunch definitely away from your desk. Uh, I've been a teleworker for most of my li working life, and um, I've always eaten lunch away uh, from my desk. I take a half hour, go prepare something that I like. Uh, go for walks if, if you can. Uh, we do need to break the monotony of the day. Um, I highly, highly recommend, and this is coming out in so many surveys, that you please stay away from the news and radio while you're working. Work is a safe place. You can shut out the world while you're working in, in most situations. But the TV can get you depressed. The news can be really... Uh, too much right now. So, you know, try to minimize the time you spend on, on the TV and the radio. Some people like meditating and by all means have an end of the day ritual because a lot of times teleworkers burn out and they end up working too much. Thank you, Elham. Uh, now we are truly happy and grateful to be joined by one of your fellow Carroll County residents who's been teleworking for five years. JR, would you like to do the introductions? Yes. Uh, Kyle Mashad is a project manager for Y Prime. Uh, Kyle and I have gotten the pleasure of knowing one another for the last, I guess it's been about two years now, Kyle. Uh, yeah. His wife moved here from Philadelphia. Uh, Kyle was teleworking there while in Philadelphia while his wife went to medical school. And uh, she's a, a physician here at Tanner Medical Center. And he continues to work from home. And so, Kyle, if you wouldn't mind, would you please... Uh, kind of explain what uh, the advantages are of being a project manager, I guess maybe advantages and disadvantages, if you don't mind, about managing teams, managing projects uh, via uh, teleconference. Yes, yeah, so to piggyback off of some of the points that Elham was making, I fully concur with taking time for yourself, particularly when it comes to 
lunch and a closed down ritual really helps cap off the day in my own experience. But I would say a, a couple major pros is the lack of um, commuting, saving on gas, the efficiency from being able to start work significantly earlier and to get a lot done without the hustle and bustle of being around an office. But in my particular niche, what Y Prime does is clinical trials software. So it's so utterly specific that our company is essentially forced to hire workers that have experience within the clinical trial space, which necessitates the company to hire from far outside of our headquarters, which is in Philadelphia. Without the global scope of hiring and recruiting, we would be severely handicapped. So as a result, I would say probably two thirds of Y Prime's workforce works from home scattered really all over the world. We have employees in the UK, Australia, there's two of us in Georgia, there's one in Denver, there's one in San Francisco. We're scattered really all over the place. Um, and the, the big benefit there is you have time zone coverage. So if there's ever someone who wants a meeting at some odd hour for me, someone who's in, say, San Francisco could have the meeting. So it gives us a little more flexibility there as well to have a uh, work-life balance that's a little bit cleaner when you're working with a pharma company that might be located outside of your time zone. The drawback is, unfortunately, the expectation is normally set that you have to be responsive and on call really uh, quite a bit of the time, maybe outside of normal business hours, and you have to be a little bit flexible with who your client assignment might be. Not every pharma company is located in the United States, and as such, you sometimes just have to be ready to have an, uh, a meeting at odd hours to be able to accommodate the client. However, the, the pros, in my personal opinion, far outweigh the cons of having meetings at strange times that, that, that might not be all that great for you personally. I, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to work from home. It's given me a lot more flexibility in my personal life without having to commute. And it's also really made my skill set transferable to wherever I live. Uh, like JR was saying, I was in Philadelphia doing the same role and now I'm in Carrollton still working in the clinical trial space and I think that's really just a, a testament to this niche industry that I'm in that really the the location of, of where you're at isn't necessarily as important as as the knowledge you you bring to the company yeah I think that's that's the big takeaway that you you're presenting here is that for a company the pro side is that you can find work anywhere as long as they have the broadband capacity to give their expertise into the, the talent pipeline, right? So let's say that you're a, a business there in Carrollton and you want to start up and have, like you were saying, some uh, time zone coverage where you have to do customer service or maybe you want to do uh, 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 workflow uh, across um, uh, an increased aspect of time. That definitely is in your favor if you do the telecommuting option. And for the, for the, for the worker, uh, and I kind of want you to kind of hit on this a little bit about the work-life balance. Uh, kind of describe what it's like that you're able to participate in that maybe a regular nine-to-five cubicle-bound worker would not be able to, to do. What's that work balance advantage? Yeah, so the, the biggest thing for me is that without having to commute to an office in, say, Atlanta, I can save that time sitting in the car and apply it to work. So we have a... Um, sizable team that's scattered across the, the UK and Ireland. And I like to be able to sign on at 8 a.m., 7.30 a.m., have a chance to talk to them, then get my day started to see what might have occurred much earlier in the, in the day, our time, when the UK office is, is up and running. So it really allows me time to connect with employees outside of my time zone. Separately, if someone on the West Coast is having some type of issue, I don't have to worry about staying in the office and waiting for them to be able to resolve it or get back to me. I can be at home and the person can message me directly on my phone to confirm that they've been able to solve the issue, whatever might be going on that particular day. 
So it gives me considerably more flexible lifestyle than it would if I only were able to operate in the office. And then the other thing from a, a broader perspective, particularly in the events that have occurred over the last five weeks, if our office had forced all of the employees to come in and thus necessitating a larger office space, those additional fixed costs, the, the, the overhead our company would have incurred, I'm not sure where we would be right now. We're a very small business. There's roughly 180 to 200 of us, and I'm thankful that we're allowed to be remote, that the, the, the company isn't spending all that money on, on the fixed costs of office and electricity and this, that, and the other, that, that there's so many of us that are remote. It, makes us not have to bear the burden of, of those expenses. So I think both from a macro level in the context of what the company is doing and then on a personal level, it's been very, very nice working from home. It's made my life easier. It's given my company a little bit more breathing room and, and we're moving through this, this pandemic pretty nicely in my opinion. We're good. Kyle, you and I talked just briefly about managing can you tell us a little bit, as a product project manager, how you operate in terms of managing your team? Yeah, so that is really twofold. One is understanding what your company expects from you, and that can be anything from um, exporting Salesforce data once a week, reviewing hours every day, understanding how the budget's being spent per role. You, you have to know what your management expects you to be able to provide back to them in turn. So the key thing really is communication. And then the next step in more of soft touch in project management is making sure your team, which is really scattered all over the world, still has daily check-ins with you to be able to ask their questions. On any given project, it can be as many as five to sometimes 10 people in all kinds of different roles from software development. I have a project assistant that shadows me to software testers to QA people that make sure our documentation is set for, for FDA review as we're a, we're a federally regulated industry. So when you have all those people and all those moving parts, really the daily check-in, the soft touch piece comes in tremendous use and kind of the, the hard quantitative piece, just really understanding clearly what management expects from you in terms of uh, conveying to the team how they should use their hours and how they are using their hours and conveying up the, the chain of command at your company for what the budget looks like on a daily or a weekly basis and to, to make sure that you're within the budget or if you're going to be issuing a change order, how that process is going. So really it all boils down to how well you can communicate and how you can resolve potentially difficult issues relating to, to budgeting and hours. Very good. That's good information. Thank you so much. Um, JR, are we ready for any questions and answers? Yes, absolutely. We'll move on to the Q&A piece. So uh, we have, uh, I'm going to take it off of this screen here, and we'll go back to some of the Q&A. Um, let's see. Um, we've got, let's see. We don't have, do we have, I don't see any questions that we have here in the chat session. Um, does anybody, I can, if you'll just unmute yourself and ask a question, that would probably be the easiest way for you to ask something, because I don't see any questions here in the mute box, or in the chat box, I mean. And we will we'll talk through it while anybody's uh, coming up with any questions that they have. If you don't have questions now, if you're, I know a lot of you, a lot of people record these and watch them um, at different times during the day, which I'm going to start adopting that as a, as a new work strategy. Uh, please don't hesitate to call me. Uh, my number is on the, you can find me on the Georgia Commute Option website. We'll put you in touch with Alham. We can set up um, any kind of phone consultations you need, and we can help you with our quick start guides, which are downloadable 
and pretty easy to follow along, but we can answer questions. That's what we're here for. And again, all of our services are free uh, to everyone in the metro Atlanta area. Um, actually, if it's okay, I'd like to ask Kyle a question. Um, <laughs> sure. So, Kyle, um, I was wondering, it sounds like you've been doing this successfully for quite a while, um, but some of your, uh, you know, probably co-workers are new to this, right, and, and the employees. Have you been able to do any, like, you know, virtual networking, or have you set aside time just to, for people to see each other and have small talk? To kind of yes. Like yeah, that's a, a great question. And in the morning, I check in with the, uh, the project assistants I have assigned to each project I'm currently working on. Um, first, so that we have a chance to connect on what's going on with the project, if any emails have come in overnight. And then secondly, just to see how everyone's doing in the middle of, of all this craziness. And the biggest takeaway, if, if I can tell everyone on this call the, the biggest takeaway of all working remotely absolutely never gossip because you don't know who's going into the office first off and second off you don't want to be the one to poison the the work well so i make a point to never get into any office politics discussions check in with them about how their lives are going how the project's going what questions they might have, what I can do to support them. And, and that's the key takeaway. Keep it totally professional. So I've personally found that to be very successful. I know the project assistants I have, um, I really like working with them. And we've been uh, one particular person I've worked with consecutively for about six months now. So it's worked out pretty well for, for both of us. We got a question that came through on the chat line. It says, uh, how does teleworking affect morale and productivity among workers who may continue to have to work in the office on site? So um, I guess we can kind of throw those open to the bigger discussion if anybody has that piece of it. Uh, if people have to work in the office, how do they view people who work at home? How do we mitigate any kind of uh, concern for productivity? Uh, maybe we go over to Kyle, Carolyn. Yeah. What do you think? Um, we actually have a couple people who are in our IT and networking department who had to go to the office in Philadelphia for some IT related issue that came up and it might sound corny, but our company decided to honor them. We all had a call one Wednesday at lunch and the IT group said what they did to keep um, the, the company up and running and we all clapped and joked around with them and that's how our company handled it and it was received very well to make them feel like they're included here and they're not being forced to do something that they don't see the benefit of in everyone's day-to-day -day lives so it might seem a little hokey but let me tell you uh, clapping remotely and joking around with them seemed to really raise morale that day in my own experience so um, I'd recommend trying to make sure the people that have to go in know the value of what they're doing. So, yeah, I, I would wholeheartedly agree with Kyle. I think um, what's also really important to know is that there is a legal definition in each state as to what are essential versus non-essential workers, and I think the the best way to keep those essential workers safe while they might have to go to work, is to actually keep the non-essential at home so that social distancing is a possibility. So, you know, that's what a lot of companies are doing, actually. They're gonna continue teleworking, and for those who are essential, then they're gonna actually measure, have safe distances, make sure that even physically they can be separated from others. Again, you know, health and safety are very important in this environment. All right, any other questions from the chat box? I don't see anything else here. Um, and I only had one more slide, which is your contact information. So I can share that, uh, unless there's anybody else who has anything they want to put into the chat box for a question. Okay, well, here then I will share back into the uh, slide. Let's go, okay. Oops. And again, JR, thanks so much. Thanks to you and the Chamber and Carol tomorrow. And we just want everybody to know out in 
Carroll County that we're here to help. We're a phone call or an email away and check in with us on our website and download those documents and let us know when you have questions. That sounds good. Thank you very much for uh, coming in and sharing this great information. I think we're all trying to get to a, uh, a sense of normalcy in this new normal, which is tough. I mean, it, for, let's, let's be honest, it's tough for anybody who's working from home when you've got screaming kids in the background or you've got the dog is tearing up the, the rug or, or you just have to um, uh, just try to make quota uh, getting around in your, in your own place. It, I think for business owners, if you're looking for a way to normalize this, Try to find a process that puts the power into the uh, uh, into a regulation. Please contact Georgia Commute Options. They can help you get this more formalized. So there's a uh, a, a, a framework for having some um, online working rather than just having it kind of ad hoc. So uh, I definitely encourage you to, to to get in touch with them. Um, with that, let me come out of uh, view mode and get back into regular mode uh, here. And just let you know that uh, the Chamber of Commerce, we're going to uh, host more of these webinars in the future. Uh, this was actually our pilot program. So Carolyn, you're, you're our pilot program for, for how we're going to do webinars in the future. And uh, this is a great learning experience. And hopefully... I always, I always like going first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good. I good. make everybody else look better. Yeah, it, it will be good. It will be good. Uh, but we're going to host more of these. So if everybody on this uh, on this uh, webinar, if you like this, uh, we encourage you to please drop us a message. Uh, if you want to go to our Facebook page, we're going to post this on our Facebook. We're going to have it on our YouTube uh, channel. And uh, we're going to try to hold more of these webinars where we're giving information about topics ranging from telecommuting to uh, business management practices. Uh, if any information comes out about uh, tax implication as a result of the CARES Act. We're going to have that in a future uh, webinar. So just stay tuned to our Facebook page. It's, uh, it's facebook.com slash carolchamberga, I think. Or you can just type into the search bar, Carroll County Chamber, and uh, that will come up on that side. So um, if there are no other questions, we're going to close this down. Thank you again, Carolyn. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you, Alham. Thank you to all the folks at, uh, uh, at uh, George Community Options. We really appreciate your input.